The image here shows the flow structures inside a shear layer. This shear layer is created by merging two flows with a spitter bait between them. The top flow in this case is going fast and the bottom flow in this case is going slow. And this generates large scale vortices between the two fluids and it's a classic example of a flow oscillation caused by a flow instability. And when studying flow instability one tends to imagine the velocity profile before any oscillations have started, which would look something like this, and then consider the behavior of infinitesimal perturbations to this velocity profile. If those perturbations tend to grow in time, then the flow is unstable. Now I won't deal with the analysis of that in this course, but I will note that when you see an inflection point in a velocity profile, then the flow is unstable unless the Reynolds number is very small. And this flow here is convectively unstable, meaning that these structures grow as they convect downstream and that no unstable perturbations can travel upstream. And a shear layer between two uniform density fluids is a classic example of a convectively unstable flow. If we take the flow around a cylinder and I examine the velocity profile at that streamwise location, I find that it looks something like this. There is reverse flow in the wake and forward flow on either side. Now this flow has two inflection points, one there and one there. And that means that each individual shear layer is unstable convectively, but it also means that there is another instability mode that arises from the interaction of these two shear layers. And in the image on the right, you can see that mode starting around there. And this is a longer wavelength and lower frequency mode. And this mode gives rise to the vortex shedding that you can see behind this cylinder. And this type of local velocity profile is known as absolutely unstable. And in this type of flow, some of the perturbations that grow in time also travel upstream. In this case, it is the long wavelength oscillation that can travel upstream and lock onto the back of the cylinder. This can cause very large amplitude oscillations and they're at a fixed frequency that depends only on the free stream velocity v and the diameter of the object, or strictly speaking, the distance between the two shear layers. And this vortex shedding at a fixed frequency and a set large amplitude has very important consequences for structures. For example, consider the structure here that's being subjected to the forces from vortex shedding at a regular frequency, and imagine what happens if that forcing frequency matches a structural resonant frequency. Of course this is very dangerous and it can cause chimneys to collapse and on some chimneys you see helical streaks around the outside of the chimney and those are put there to disrupt vortex shedding and therefore avoid the vortex shedding locking in with the resonant frequency of the chimney.